painting that I've popped in a frame just to see if it could be finished and I've decided it's not. don't like the composition. But something about it really grabbed me. And this is where we can get stuck. Right? We've got something we like that we don't want to lose, but it's not right. So then we get stuck. We put it to one side. We don't want to mess with it. And I know this is a very abstract piece, but this also happens with realistic painting. You might be painting a still life and you got a certain, like you got an apple just right, but then it's slightly in the wrong place. You've decided the composition's wrong, but you don't want to mess with it because the apple's beautiful. What I always try and remember at this point is, number one, you did it once so you can do it again. So um, whatever it is that you love, you've not lost forever. Take a photograph of what you've got. Make notes. I, I take my photograph, I stick it in my studio workbook and I write notes about what I liked. What I've realised about this one, what I like is a lot of random things happening that happened out of free play. There's some sanded areas. I really like the textures that have happened. I've, I like the text that's showing through without any real thought. So I can do random again. And the other thing I like is this colour combination which is this very cool light green that I mixed up from the limited palette I'm using a splash of very bright orange so that green has orange in it so they harmonize this blue this green has this blue in it so they harmonize here is blue very dark it's thalo turquoise mixed with some black so what I'm really loving is the color combination and I can do that again. What I don't like, so then I move, so I take a photograph, I note what I like, so that I can reproduce that in another painting or in this painting, because this one could go off in a completely different direction once I start working on it. Then what don't I like? Well, it's got no cohesive point to it. It's got no, if you were looking at this painting, you're just gonna stare at these big black shapes, big dark shapes, because there's nothing else to guide your eye around. Am I, is this about text? Is it about dots? Is it about a scribble? Is it about these big black shapes? Well, yeah, it is at the moment, because that's the most dominant thing in the painting. There's nothing in it that's telling you, as the person looking at it, what you should feel or think or experience as you look at it except for bleh, there's a big splodge and maybe some people think all abstract painting is random daubs but it isn't it has to have some kind of cohesion within the painting and so my job now is to keep working on it let go of some of the things that I loved knowing that I've taken a photo I know what I liked about what I did so I've not lost anything once you get the freedom to do that, then you are really free in your art. You will never again be frightened to cover something up because you know you can do it again. So if, you're, if you've got a still life or a portrait or something stuck in a corner that you just don't know what else to do with so you've left it, the reason, and same for an abstract painting, the reason you put it in the corner is it's not finished, you know it's not. You've got yourself stuck because you love something in it. You've got to let go of that and move forward. Otherwise, it'll just sit there forever. You're never going to be satisfied enough with it to sell it. It isn't good enough. Or if it was good enough, you would have put it up for sale or hung it on your wall or given it to a friend or whatever you do with the paintings that you think are good enough. So... I shall have a bit of a play with this and just try and move it forward a bit. So when I'm working a painting like this, I'm thinking about what do I like, what don't I like. We've gone through what I like. So what don't I like? Um, the the blockiness, the it's nice to have a strong transition between light and dark, but there's just too much of it. And so I want to tone some of that down and get rid of some of that blockiness. And um but having made a decision as to what I want to do, I need to be free with the way I do it. It needs to not be uh, precious. Otherwise, what happens is you, you just get tight and tense and then the whole thing fails. So 
I've got rid of some of that and made a light area. I want to like tone down. I like the contrast between that and the green, but I'd like something in between as well. So it's not all one big block of hard stuff. So. That's slightly lighter. It's not actually much lighter, so some more white into it. I can always bring that that really dark back if I want to. Uh, and I like I, I'm liking leaving the brush strokes where you can see them because part of what I'm doing in this series, and this is the other thing, I try to think, okay what is my objective in this series and i go back to it's loose brush strokes against pattern and it's text showing through and it's a sense of history so keep that in i have to keep that in mind as i'm making these changes and i love that scribble but it's just in the wrong place I just don't feel like i like it there so it's gonna have to go i don't like that mushy color i just created a bit more uh, pulling one color of paint into the other I never like that um, you might really like when you do that I just don't like it and I'm gonna soft blend some of this because it's another thing I don't have is any soft blending it's all big bold brush marks now you see that a lot of the stuff I said I liked I've, has gone now the dark against that green but I can bring that dark back in in selective places when I know where I want it to be. I'm already happier because I've made some decisive moves on it. And really, that's all we ever need to do. Now, if I keep going on this, it's going to turn to mud because everything's wet. Often I get asked, oh, look what I've just done. Often I get asked questions about um, why do my colours go muddy? And often it's related to the fact that you've kept working on things, putting one colour over another before they're dry, especially with acrylic um, paint. I don't know about oils, but same happens with watercolour. But with watercolour, it never fully dries. Of course, you can reactivate it by putting more paint on top. And the same thing happens. You create mud if you're not really careful. So in order to not create mud, I'm going to let that dry and then probably bring a little bit more of that dark in again to contrast against that green that I in the way I really liked and I'll have to work out how to mix that green again I've got a very limited palette I'm working with so it can't be that hard but I'm not quite sure which combination of colors created that green a more organized painter than me might keep records of everything in a very precise fashion but that would be a more organized painter than me I end up just not doing any of that the one thing i do want to do i could put some of that dark up here where i've got this dotty tissue paper so let me do that and then i'm gonna let you go and enjoy your day uh, and there is a little bit of the green there but i'd like to come in and um put some more of that there now as a nice contrast at the moment there's a very strong contrast between dark and light right in the middle of the painting and I'll probably replace this with the light green when I can mix it up but for now just to get it out of my sight and stop it distracting me there's not necessarily a rule that says you can't have that but if I don't want you to get fixated down there I really don't want to have such a strong contrast between dark and light so I'll just tone it down a bit and that instantly frees you up to now look around instead of looking in the middle so that's how to let go of parts of a painting that you really love go for it <laughs> accept that you're gonna lose those things take a photo go for it and then um, go for it in the same energetic manner that you initially created what you created because when you keep going like this something better will come out of it you just have to keep going this is not finished but 
I've given myself something different to respond to now and I still have the photograph of what I loved. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave me a comment. Let me know what you think. Hit subscribe. And if you haven't already signed up for my free workshop that's coming up in June, please do. It's a workshop that's about more than just the kind of things I show on YouTube. It's about how to learn how to do this kind of thing for yourself. It's about how to start finding your own voice and your own inquiries and your own interests instead of watching other people on YouTube. So I really want to help you do that. You can join me on June the 3rd and the link to sign up is in the description for this video. So please do that. Don't forget to leave me a comment, let me know what you think and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.